Hello everyone! Today I'm going to introduce you to a new illustration app. It's a free app named Vectornator, and similar to Adobe Illustrator, you can create illustration using a vector. In my previous video, I made a picture of a Christmas tree using a vector, but for that, I use a different app called Affinity Designer. Today I'm going to use Vectornator and make a vector icon. You can use vectors on both apps, so they have similar functions, but this one is free. So if you're interested, look up Vectornator in the App Store and download it. It's a free app, but it's pretty useful, and you can create beautiful gradation like this, or complex illustration. I usually use Affinity Designer, so I don't use this often, but some of you have asked me to introduce this app since it's free, and that's why I'm doing this today. Today I'm going to create an icon of a ship with beautiful gradation like this. As you can see, the curves of the waves are really neat. So I want to show you things like how to use path to create them, and how to create pretty gradation like this. Okay, let's get started. Open Vectorator, and let's make a canvas first. You can do this by tapping the plus icon at the top right corner. This time, we are going to choose a custom size, but you can import from your photos or the cloud if you want to here. Today, we want a square canvas, so set the dimensions to 1024 times 1024. When you open the canvas, you'll see the screen first. But you can use the toolbar on the left to select tools, draw paths, and add text. On the right, there are tabs like these, and each of them has a panel. You can paint and select color, add images, and change the order of layers from here. The settings can be done at the top left corner. There is a gear icon here, and when you tap it, you can change the settings of the canvas. For example, you can add grids, change the background, and adjust the size of the canvas. You can also change the settings of CMYK here, which is really impressive for a free app. So if you want to print, turn the CMYK on to make things easier. Okay, I'm going to start working on the design now. You get layer 1 by default, so we'll start off by drawing here. When you want to draw circles, you can tap the second icon from the bottom, which is the shape tool, and select the shape you want to add and drag it on the canvas to draw it. If you keep one finger on the screen while dragging the shape, you can make a perfect circle like this. Let's draw a perfect circle like this, and place it in the center. When you want to add color, open the first panel on the right, and you can change the color fill or the color of the line. So first, let's change the color fill by selecting a color from the color picker. It's currently set to fill all, but you can tap the button on the right to change it to gradation like this. The button in the middle turns it to line gradation. And you can change the color by using the color picker below. You can also change the white part to another color as well. Next, I'm going to change the angle of the gradation, and you can do this by selecting the end of this line, holding it, and dragging it like this. This time, I'm going to make it diagonal, starting from the top left and ending at the bottom right. 
Next, the outline. There is a black outline to the circle, but this time we don't want it, so let's tap the eye icon and hide it. When you're done, let's move on to the waves. We are going to use the pen tool to make the waves. It's the fourth tool from the top on the toolbar. Let's start drawing the curves of the wave. First, draw a dot on the left and stretch it to the right. Then, do the same but slightly higher this time. Repeat this and you get a curve that looks like a wave. You don't have to worry about the lower part of the wave. Just draw a path to cover the circle. Okay, that's good enough for now. If you want to make some adjustments to the wave later, there is a notch tool in the toolbar, so select it and adjust the anchor points to make the waves bigger or smaller. We are going to add some gradation to this object as well. Take the gradation tool and adjust the angle to a vertical gradation. Then change the color. Let's make the light blue gradation to a darker blue. When you're done with this, let's add two more wave layers by duplicating it. To do this, select the arrow tool at the top of the toolbar and tap the copy button that shows up on the right, this one. Turn this on, drag the wave, and you get a copy of the wave object. While the copy function is turned on, when you try to move the object, it copies it instead, so be careful when using it. As you can see, you can add some depth to the illustration by having three layers of waves. Next, let's draw the ship. Select the shape tool in the toolbar and pick the rectangle tool to add one to the picture. Let's also change the gradation to red. In this illustration, we are going to consistently use gradation to make it look clean, so I'll add gradation to all objects. Now I want to change the rectangle to trapezoid, so let's select the notch tool again and move the anchor points so that it looks more like a ship. Also, by moving the ship layer below the waves, you can make it look like the ship is behind the waves to give it more depth. Next, let's draw the sail. Let's use the pen tool, the fourth tool in the toolbar from the top. Watch closely. I'm going to draw a triangle, but when doing this, I want to make it curvy. First, add two dots parallel to the line, and when you add the third one, pull it to the right. Then you get a curve like this. So take the pen off the screen and tap the first dot to connect all the dots and finalize the shape. This is how you use the pen tool. 
It's called the Vizier Curve, and you might be familiar with it if you have used Illustrator, but it might take some time to get used to the pen tool. There are some rules and patterns when using the pen tool, so it might take some time for you to understand that, but by using this, you'll be able to make really neat lines and curves, so I hope you practice using it. Finally, let's add a sun to the upper left corner. First, select the circle tool and add a white circle to the canvas. When you want to change the opacity, go to the bottom of the color tab right here and you can slide this bar to adjust the opacity. Now I'm going to make three duplicates of the circle. To do this, select the circle, turn on the copy function, and drag the circle. Repeat this three times. Okay, we're done making all the objects. To finish up, I'm going to cram all the objects into a circle, and I'm going to use the mask function to do this. If you look at the layer panel, the circle that we made in the beginning is at the bottom. So we're going to drag it to the top. Now the circle is on top of the other objects, so select all the objects. To add a mask, tap the tab in the middle of the bar and press the left button under the mask category right here. When you do that, all the objects fit into the circle. This is the mask tool in Vectornator. If you're an illustrator, this will come in handy, so I hope you make use of this. Drag the object you want to trim to the top, select all the objects, and use a mask. I hope you practice using this tool, and replay this video if you think you've missed something. As a final touch, I'm going to add shadow gradation. Use the circle tool and add a circle behind the design. The color I'm using is navy. Go to the color panel, find the blur category, and when you click it, you can enter a value for the blur. This time I'll set it to 70, and now we have blurring effects. You can create design by just adding this effect, so I hope you try it too. When you want to adjust the position, there is a black button at the bottom right corner, so press it and pull it to the bottom right to change the position little by little. You could use the pen to just drag the object, but you might end up moving other objects that you didn't want to move, so if you're going to run only one object, use this black button to drag it. Now I change the color to something lighter, and by dragging the black button, the blur moves slowly, and now it looks like shadow. If you're a designer, I think you know that pixel makes a huge difference, so I hope you use this. When you export on Vectornator, you can do it from the gear icon at the top left. 
tap the gear icon and you see the export category with a list of file formats like JPEG, PNG, or SVG. But what's interesting here is that you can export it in the Adobe Illustrator and iFormat. So you can send this file to Illustrator. This is something that I really like about this app and it's useful if you're an Adobe user. You can create illustration using Vectornator, send it to Illustrator, and finish it up on your desktop. Okay, the exported file looks like this. The lines are drawn using a vector, so even when you zoom in, you can see that they are completely smooth. Vectors are just lovely. If you want to create an icon with smooth lines, I suggest you check out Vectornator. Okay, that's all for today. In my iPad Mate online community, I post some tutorial videos that are exclusive to members, so if you want to master iPad design, please take a look. I leave the details in the description box. Thank you for watching my video. Please give it a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.